I'll just say to you too, uh, this is a historic event. I mean, the first time that we've really seen such, I mean, such a full display of, of direct action regarding this really massive issue. Um, so if, I don't know who to direct this towards first, whoever wants to go in first, but really speak to like, the fact is that finally, it seems that we have this sort of Senate committee, there's a federal government's really kind of beginning very slowly, but beginning to really address this issue on some level. What is lacking? Why is it necessary to do this sort of direct action? Um, there are a number of reasons. I mean, it, it, the hearing for one, the format of the hearing, the timing of the hearing, um, it was given with one one week's notice mm. um, over a holiday weekend to a community that is largely disabled and devoid of resources, you know, financial resources, um, and for whom travel is very difficult and very risky. Um, we risk reinfection with exposure, even if we try to take you know, precautions um, with masking and things like that. And many of us are immunocompromised. So having a hearing with so little chance to actually have representation is a big problem. It, it really favors the people. It, it, it biases the representation at the hearing to those who are the most healthy, the most well-off. And it skews the picture of what long COVID is for the Senate um, and senators holding the hearing and for the American public. And that is a huge problem. And that is a problem that has been pervasive from the beginning with long COVID is the most severe patients are not being represented at all. I see. And the other thing with the hearing is um, for anyone to request accommodation of any kind of disability, it has to be done three days um, in advance three business days in advance. So the hearing was announced on Thursday um, you know, people had Friday, if they heard about it right away, <clears throat> Friday, um, Tuesday and Wednesday, and then the hearing was Thursday to get any accommodation. There's, wow. there's no time for that. So I, I really feel like it is on the surface. It looked like a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, wow. They're finally, you know, wanting to listen to long COVID patients, but it had the appearance without the substance behind it of allowing full representation. And, and that's part of the reason that we were there. Okay. Um, and then I guess other things, if I can go into them, um, is, is that, that um, you know, so representation is is one of them. And, and I will say we have patients in our community who are suffering from very severe um, conditions now. We have people who are developing AIDS like immunodeficiency. Um, we have people and they are succumbing to um, secondary um, opportunistic infections. Um, we have people who are getting strokes. We have people who are developing cancers. We have people who um, are developing, um, you know, strange metabolic disorders and immune, um, autoimmune diseases. Um, we have a lot of severity that's not represented there. Generally, when long COVID is being represented in hearings like this or um, in the public, they're focusing on fatigue. And yes, fatigue is a bad symptom to have, but it's not nearly as um, life-threatening as some of the other symptoms that people are developing. And these conditions just aren't seeing the light of day. And LCAP had requested to be able to um, participate in the hearing, to have uh, witnesses testify. There was a letter campaign, which I think is the largest um, long COVID letter campaign that resulted in over 400,000 letters being sent um, to public officials requesting um, representation. Well, some of them later requested representation at the hearing once we found out about that. But before that, um, LCAP has 11 demands to stop long COVID um, to address the pandemic, um, to address the pandemic itself and to address the phenomenon of long COVID. Um, the two need to be addressed together. And um, we have not been receiving any traction on that. So the letter campaign was to um, really publicize that. And then um, we had a follow-on campaign when we heard about the hearing to get representation at the hearing itself so we could present LCAP's demands and the position of LCAP and have a seat at the table. Mm -hmm. And that, that did not occur, is that it correct? It did not occur. Mm -hmm. And LCAP has been trying for a long time to get a seat at the table, and that has not happened. And this felt like a last-ditch effort. We had hope up until the end that we might be given a chance to testify. That didn't happen, and so we resorted to the direct action. Mm -hmm. to start sure. drawing attention to things that, that um, Congress does not seem to be willing to look at. 